The Health Canada document titled Guide to Addressing Moisture and Mold Indoors is quite detailed on background of mold, etc., and provides quite a bit of very useful information regarding mold for uh, most residential clients and basically anybody that doesn't know much about mold. Um, what we do get a comment on usually though is that on page 11 of this document under section titled air testing for mold uh, a lot of clients call us saying well I don't think I need to do an air test for mold um, I uh, suspect mold here um, we just want to go ahead with it and we can do that um, but Health Canada actually mentions uh, they say Health Canada does not recommend testing the air for mold um, because it doesn't provide uh, or provides very little information on the cause of mold damage in the house. Um, but that's most likely for um, you know a residential client, maybe somebody that doesn't know much about mold. But for us as mold investigators, mold assessors, uh, and mold remediation specialists, we see value in obtaining a good representative sample of the air quality. Um, they do mention non-viable air testing, which is basically testing for all the spores, total mold spores that are present in the air. Um, which does give us quite a bit of information. So for example, if we see an elevated level of aspergillus pelicillium, but we don't see anything else uh, in the air sample that we take, most likely what that means is that there's something that's just brewing, something's just starting, aspergillus pelicillium being these indicator types of molds that just pop up into the air uh, as the first type of uh, molds that start growing in, in surfaces. If we see, for example, that there's very little mold, uh, uh, aspergillus pelicillium, but we see, um, you know, crazy example, but if we see an elevated level of uh, stachybotrys, for example, what most people call the black mold or eulocladium or cactomium, if we see that elevated in the air, but we don't see any wall cuts or anything like that, we can most likely predict that there's something in the wall cavities where there's been uh, persistent and continuous uh, water activity. So something that's been wetted for a long time and continues to be wetted um, that allows for these molds to basically develop within the cavities and they've most likely grown to a, a critical mass and now they're just becoming airborne inside the house. So those are just two examples of how we can interpret the results whenever we get an air sample result. So typically when people ask, do we need the air test? Uh, yes. Um, if you're a con uh, contractor and you're starting a new project, uh, you also want to get an air test um, for mold whenever you're dealing with water damage. Why? Because you want to identify the initial conditions of the property um, as is, uh, especially if it's just a small water loss in the segmented area of the building. You want to identify what's going on in that area, uh, what are the baseline molds that are uh, within the home before you start your project. So that, you know, in the future, once you finish your project, if the homeowner requires or wants to,